Hey guys, Mike with Insightful Imagery, and I want to share with you today a video on how I took a photo of a three-inch car, and I went from this, to this, <laughs> to this. Um, you know, I, and I'll show you how to do the same thing. I'll, I'll show you my process in this video, uh, and how I went from spraying the piece of styrofoam with spray paint, uh, cutting it, um, you know, and building uh, on the image with lighting in layers like I normally do in my other videos. That's one thing about my toy photography that really makes it stand out and create depth is that I use different layers of lighting, different color temps. Uh, and here, one of the really cool tricks that I did is when I cut this styrofoam, I cut it in a long, um, tapered uh, shape so that it gave the idea of some depth and infinity into the horizon on the picture that you see uh, on the right. And I'll show you how to do some simple Photoshop stuff uh, in this video also if you stick around to the end uh, because I did use a little Photoshop on the final picture on the far right. But enough of me yapping, let's get going. So here I'm going to speed ramp some of this to save you guys time, but I've just got a basic you know piece of uh, pink foam Board from Home Depot and I've got these miniature cars and I've had them for a while I you know uh, they've been sitting on my shelf and I bought them <laughs> a year ago <laughs> about time I use them right uh, you know but as the as the weather changes and I go outside less frequently because of rain or cold or whatever uh, or because I'm lazy <laughs> you know I'll sit in my garage and I'll come back and I'll revisit different you know types of photography whether it's macro or toys or whatever here these are toys, but they are really small. These are like three-inch cars. They're like I think they're smaller than a regular even Hot Wheel. They might be about the same size. But anyway, uh, here I'm getting a piece of foam board, and you know I'm kind of eyeballing the scale of how I want, uh, how wide I want the road to be in the front. Because remember, this road is going wide in the front, and it's going you know, in the very back, it's going to go to a very tapered, like a point almost. So it looks like there's some, uh, you know, uh, infinity that like, you know, the road goes off into the distance. And, and that's the illusion I want to create with the styrofoam. Um, and also with the lighting in the uh, actual photo. So here I'm just doing some basic measurements and uh, probably looking for a marker. There we go. We got one. So we're going to divide this road uh I'm going to draw the lines out here to, to create the basic shape. See there, I'm going to go all the way back, uh, wide in the front, and it's going to go much narrower in the back. See that? It's uh, That's one of the things that's going to help make this image look more believable. Um, and it's just simple tricks, you know, like this that kind of help set your project apart. Uh, you know, I'm not the best photographer. I'm not the best road builder, but... I try to use enough, you know, little details in there to help sell the image. And, you know, and this is one of those little tricks. So here, you know, I just, I scored the foam board with a blade and thought I would use that <laughs> stick to create depth to snap it and it didn't work. So anyway, uh, I just ended up snapping it on a, another piece of foam board. But you just want to score it and then break it off, which is what I did here. And I'm left with... Um, you know, a piece, the shape that I want. Look at that. It's going to fit two cars nicely on there uh, for the scale of car that they are. The road is, you know, like I said, I eyeballed it. Uh, don't sand this in your studio. Sand it outside. I just wanted to take the beveled, you know, the sharp edges and get them off of there. Then I take some aluminum foil and I just create some texture in the road. Uh, you know, little divots and cracks and creases and scrapes and just, you know, whatever you'd find on a roadway uh, that you drove down. And, you know, make sure to hit all the, the sharp edges so that there's no real sharp, uh, crisp edges. It's all fairly textured and uh, see that there's some good texture in there. And then I just go through and I just twist it and make some little knots and stuff in there. You know, just anything to break it up. And then I got some spray paint here from Home Depot. And um, now you can spray paint this stuff. You just spray paint it from a distance, about 12 inches away, uh, you know, and you're not going to hurt the styrofoam itself. Um, and at any rate, so, you know, a lot of people think that you can't spray paint this, but you, you can. Uh, so here we're looking about right. I'm just kind of eyeballing it and, uh, making sure that, you know, it, it's going to look appropriate, you know, for scale and size. So now to the fun stuff, man, <laughs> you know, I'm inside the studio 
what I normally do is, you know, I have a roll of seamless laid out, whether it's black or white or whatever. Uh, here I've got a black roll of seamless. I've got my main light, which is an overhead. Um, it's the Explore 600. It's the one that I always use. A couple things about this setup though today um, that I'll share with you is uh, you can see my modeling light coming on. Uh, I want to shed blue light over this scene. Uh, nice, even, soft blue light to create the idea of nighttime or um, you know midnight kind of feel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this grid off. That's a really tight grid that's in there. And I kind of was trying to decide which grid I wanted to use. Uh, I think that's a 20 in there. Um, and... You know, I put the blue gel inside. I think I've got a 60 degree grid there on the table. And, you know, to control the light spill, uh, I want the light to fade from blue, and you'll see this in the image later, blue toward the front of the frame, um, and it fades off darker toward the back of the frame. Um, and, and so it gives, it helps sell the idea that you're driving off into, you know, some dark distant roadway. You know, and so by using a tighter grid, I'm going to be able to more control the light spill and, and control where the light falls on the scene. And you'll see later here uh, how important that is in, in creating the, you know, the kind of illusion that that I'm, I'm after. Um, and so you can see where the light is falling right there. Uh, and already, before I even take a test frame, you can see that it's hot in one spot. I, you know, I'm going to fix that later and I'll show you what it looks like in a test image so that you'll be able to see that. Uh, but, you know, like I say, the goal was to create a soft, even blue light. I'm going to take my transmitter out of the box here and I'm going to put it on my camera. Uh, that's what fires my flash. Right now it's just a modeling light on there. Um, it's best to do this, you know, if you're going to use one of these triggers um, to to fire your flash, you know, do it before you set up your focus and everything, because once you focus and get your composition and everything, then you have to think, oh, I forgot to put the transmitter on. <laughs> you have to refocus. But anyway, um, you know, uh, you know, you don't have to have these lights, you know, and I say this stuff all the time, you know, there are ways to do it without these lights. You know, they may be a little longer, it may take a little longer, it may take a little more work, but you know, I have these lights and, and they make my job simple. I'll link them in the description below if you want to use, you know, lights. I mean, I have these because I do portraits of people and stuff too. So I can, you know, use them also in toy photography to a great degree. Um, but uh, you don't have to have these. But I'll link them in the description below if you want to see what I what I use in this video. Um, so, yeah, I like my hat. My wife bought me a new hat. And I just left the tags on, man. <laughs> Who cares? I'm not here to impress anybody with my fashion. Uh, we're talking about toy photography. So here, a point I want to make is I'm moving the car forward or backward. Okay. I can't move my camera any further forward or backward uh, to get focus because the depth of field is so shallow right here. I've got a 35 millimeter Sigma 1.4 on there with an extension tube. Um, okay. Uh, and I can't move my camera any further forward. So in order to get focus... I move the car closer or further away from the lens. The minimum focusing distance on this lens is, is just under a foot normally, but with this extension tube on there, um, I decrease that uh, greatly, <laughs> and it gives me the distortion that I want, uh, which is why I used this 35 millimeter lens. I had some. I usually use like if I'm doing action figures, I'll use a 200 millimeter with an extension tube on there. But uh, I wanted to go for that. Uh, distorted look and so I chose this lens and you can see I forgot my <laughs> cameras work a little bit better at capturing images when there's a <laughs> card in there <laughs> anyway got one in there now <laughs> look at that so uh, here I'm just making some fine-tuning adjustments I'm just making sure my composition is right just making sure that focus is good and believe it or not man you're gonna see later you know I love this Sigma lens, man. I use it for Milky Way, but at any rate, uh, I use it. I'm using it here too, to just sh really sharp focus, you know. So let's start taking some test pictures, and I'll show you something here. We're gonna take a test shot here 
uh, and just get a basic idea of what the scene is looking like. And you're going to see my camera timer flash off. I've got it on 10 second timer here. Uh, and all this is is going to be a single light with the car on the road. And I'm just going to see what my main light looks like on the overall scene. So here's that photo, and like I say, this is just a photo to show what the main overhead light is doing. It's definitely dark, it's definitely blue. Um, as expected, it's flat, there is no detail, but I'm not looking for that just yet. I want to check and, and see how the composition, how everything is looking uh, as far as what my main light is doing to the frame. That's it. Um, so with you know, knowing in mind what it looks like, we're going to go ahead and start to build some layers in here. Now, I did see that hot spot in the middle, and later I'm going to fix that. Uh, I don't want to see that, so we'll address that later. But for now, we're going to go ahead and uh, add some other lights to the scene. So you can see me here, you know, I'm just scrolling through the back uh, of my camera on that image and just seeing what I like about the frame, what I don't like about the frame. Uh, and I just showed it to you guys on the screen. You know, it's dark, it's flat, um, there's a hot spot in it, you know. Um, and that's where you start, you just build on your first frame. I'm looking at my main light right now, and now we're going to go ahead and use a loom cube um, to begin to bring in some other layers of lighting. If you're going down a freeway dark late at night, you know, try to just envision how that's going to look. There might be a car way in the distance ahead of you. There might be a car behind you. Um, that diffuser I had on there was, uh, you know, didn't allow me to really control the light very well. The light spread, so I'm going to use a snoot. And that's one great thing about these loom cubes is they're totally modifiable. Uh, you can change the power settings on them via Bluetooth if you want. They've got all kinds of different options for modifying and more importantly, controlling the light, because that's what's really critical on photography like this, is controlling the light. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what adding this loom cube uh, is going to do to the scene. I've got a snoot on here, and I'm going to create an effect with this. Remember what I said a minute ago about what you might down the road. There's going to be cars behind you, headlights in your mirrors, there's going to be you know, different things like that. And so this is where I add a second layer of depth to the scene by just simply adding a snooted loom cube to the frame. Let's take a look and see what this image looks like. I think you're going to like it. <laughs> take a look at this. With just the addition of a loom cube behind, I've created the idea that um, there's that, first of all, there's that second layer of lighting there. There's, there's some more depth to the scene so the image on the right clearly shows the bumper illuminated uh, as if there was a car behind possibly lighting the uh, rear of this vehicle um, and so that just helps sell the idea that you know this is a road uh, there's cars uh, we're driving off into you know <laughs> and we've got that perspective with the way we cut the foam and I painted the lines on there closer together toward the end of the piece of foam so you know it just really helps sell I'm just looking at the back of the camera here and uh, going through the frame that I just showed you guys and you know I mean it really is a cool simple you know trick when you understand just some basic light stuff that you know different you know, lights and color temps and gels just help create that depth. And, you know, that's another thing I wanted to point out on this video is one reason I shot this car from behind, uh, there's a couple, but one of them was because I, I wanted to, you know, show the perspective thing to you guys where, you know, I cut the piece of foam off into a triangle um, look at this first, man. Look at that on the screen. How super cool that is, man. God. F11 is another point I want to touch on. Uh, I want to share with you guys why I chose F11 and photographing this car from behind. But look at that, man. That is so stinking awesome. This is so fun. Uh, okay, let's talk about some of the details real quick. I'm just happy with that photo, the way it looks so far. So what we've got, F11 and why photograph, photograph the car from behind. Because when your lens is that close to a subject, 
the the depth of field is like nothing. There is nothing there. Okay, so um, I photographed it from behind so that I didn't have to try to stack the image of the car from front to back, making sharp and taking like 300 stinking photos of it. <laughs> so F11, I wanted to get as much depth of field out of the position the camera was in and how close the car was to it as I possibly could. That's why I'm at a half a second. Um, you know, I drag the shutter a little bit to help um, bring in the light of the loom cube. Here, you know, also I want to point out, and I'm going to get sidetracked and lose a point, I know, but I'm adjusting my main light. Remember I said that hot spot was there with that blue light? So what I'm doing, I'm not adjusting my light output, my flash power. Um, I'm raising the uh, boom on my lamp. And what that's going to do is lessen the uh, hot spot there and I'm going to adjust the position just a little bit. Remember I said it was a hot spot and I just didn't want to see that. I wanted a more even blue uh, light falling on the scene from above and so that's what I'm doing here uh, but you know f11 uh, you know half of a second gave me enough exposure uh, you know time at f11 with the power I had the flash set to and also the the loom cube I had it set uh, you know half a second gave me enough time to expose and for the frame to soak up the blue light from the flash but stay open long enough to expose also for the loom cube behind uh, that's kind of what's called dragging the shutter um, but and now that I've adjusted my main light which is the Explore 600 I'm going to do another shot um, and we're going to just re-examine and I'm going to put the two up side by side where the blue light uh, was before and after, uh, you know, in its different positions where the hotspot was there and where I fixed the hotspot. So I'm going to go ahead and bring, uh, after my timer is done going off here, and I'm just holding that loom cube by hand behind there up under the camera. Uh, and so let's take a look at that shot. Bam, fire that blue flash off. <laughs> but let's take a look at this shot right here. The one on the left is with the hotspot. The one on the right, we raised the boom and... You know, we raised the main light on the C stand and we evened out the fall of the blue light, uh, fixing that hot spot. The loom cube is in the same position. I'm hand holding the loom cube just under the lens of the camera. Um, and, you know, it just it evens out the road because your eye immediately goes to that hot spot in the frame on the left. And I didn't want that. I, I don't want the focus to be in the distance. I want the focus to be what's you know, you could possibly even be in the car that's behind this car uh, whose lights are shining on the bumper, you know. And so I, I I, don't want your eye to go off into the distance of the frame, I, you know. And so that hot spot uh, not only looks terrible, but it's distracting and, and it takes your eye someplace, you know, I don't want it to go. And it's a simple fix. If your lights are too hot in a spot, control them better, um, you know diffuse them, uh, raise the light up, you know, things like that. There's different ways you can control the light, and it just depends on what you're shooting. But um, I'm really happy with the way this is coming out so far. It's looking really good. Uh, you know, with just, we're three frames into this, and, you know, we're already coming out with a great image just by following some simple basic steps. Set up, compose, shoot with your main light, uh, make some adjustments, Add your other lights. Really easy. Now this is where it gets really cool. I'm like, you know what, man? What else am I gonna see in a in a long, you know, long lonely stretch of road? I might see some tail lights off in the distance. How can I do some tail lights off in the distance? I could have did it in post. Yeah, I could have did it in Photoshop. But man, not everybody watching my videos knows how to do Photoshop, you know. And so I want to share with you, you know how you can do that. I've got some Christmas lights. What I do is I go through the string of Christmas lights and I find two red ones and I take the bulbs out and I put those bulbs uh, at the very end of the string of lights um, and, you, and then I tape them together. I tape them really close together because think about it again in perspective. Way down in the distance you're going to see the lights really close together. You know, up close, you're going to see the lights really far apart. So I tape them together, see, and I'm positioning them over the road so I can kind of get an idea of what it's going to look like. Now, fortunately here in this case, my daughter's boyfriend 
uh, happened to be watching. Um, and so I'm like, hey, give me your jacket sleeve. <laughs> We're going to run these lights up through your jacket sleeve. You're going to hold them behind uh, the road there. And um, at F11, I don't have to worry about him being in the frame. There's no light falling on him. The awesome thing about that jacket sleeve is that it conceals all the other uh, light bulbs emitting light in that string of Christmas lights. So it effectively controls the light. <laughs> he's a human mask. Uh, so you see, look at the end result right there. He's going to hold uh, those lights, you know, in a position that makes it look like there's tail lights to a car off in the distance. And I fire two or three shots off to just make sure that he's in the right position and I'm in the right position and that it looks good. And we drag the shutter once again. We're still at a half a second um, and it's going to come out really nice. Uh, let me show you something. I'll show you uh, one of the final images here real quick. One of the final images of the um, three that I took to make sure that you know uh, the, the uh, tail lights were high enough up, up off the road and in the right part of the road. Uh, I'll show you the image I finally settled on. But you know I've done all this in like what four frames. So you know, uh, and it's just some really simple stuff. Um, look at that. Look at those tail lights. Yeah, see my exposure. Everything is just the same. My shutter speed is half a second. F11. Ah, uh, look, <laughs> cornball. But anyway, you know, it's really fun and make it really fun for yourself. Now, if you've stuck around this long and you want to see how to add the sky to it and the tail lights on my car and the glowing stuff, then watch you can watch the other part of this video i'm going to add that i was going to make it into a separate video but ah i'm going to make it all into one video and then i'll time stamp it in the description i just pointed to my explorer 600 i just pointed to my loom cubes uh both of which will be in the description down below if you choose to purchase any of those um but let's get going to the editing part of the video and i'll show you some cool stuff there uh, so you can see how i did the little tail light trick with the jacket sleeve and stuff like that and <laughs> pretty cool anyway so this is the image with no photoshop no nothing if you just didn't have any photoshop skills this is how that image would look okay um now the next part of this video i want to share with you just how i take the image from lightroom uh with a couple basic you know local uh adjustments um you know i'll export it from there to photoshop and i'll insert a sky and use a layer mask and um, you know, do some headlights and tail lights with some different layer blending modes and stuff. It's re it's really it's easy stuff. But I mean, everything's easy if you know. But um, like I say, if you didn't have any Photoshop skill, um, I would show you. Uh, you know, this is this is where you would stop and you would have this really cool image. Um, and it was really simple. We got this shot in like four frames. You know, so um, hopefully that you know, shed a little light on, on how, you know, fun and easy something like that could be. Um, here, like I say, we're going to go into Photoshop and uh, take a look and see, you know, we're going to, I mean, Lightroom, and I'm going to do just some basic uh, image adjustments here, uh, you know, as far as contrast, uh, you know, um, some sharpness, maybe clean up the back of the car a little bit. I do that in Photoshop, but uh, I did make sure you guys do your lens profile corrections also. Um, I shot this, like I say, I'm a Sigma 35 millimeter 1.4 art lens. I usually use for the Milky Way, but it offers some great, uh, you know, angle of view when used with an extension tube for, you know, a project like this. You know, um, so now here we are in Photoshop. What I'm going to do here is go to Pexels. Now, Pexels is a free website. I do have star pictures I could put in here, but for the sake of time, um, Pexels is a free... They don't pay me to say anything about this. I just use it. Um, it's a free extension that you can use on Photoshop to get free images. I mean, how cool. Free images to use however you want. Uh, I'm just scrolling through here and trying to find an image I think is going to be uh, one that's easy to match and easy to blend with this scene obviously you don't want to post a picture you know of a full bright moon right here because the direction of the light is coming from on top so keep that in mind match your light sources um i don't want any picture that shows a light source some people might say oh well stars are a light source well yeah they are but they're not going to create a harsh shadow 
underneath my car like the moon would. So just you know, say that. <laughs> so sometimes you get lost in scrolling through the free photos on Pexels. Uh, but this one here, I like. It's got a horizon. Uh, you know, something shadowed and silhouetted off in the distance, and it's not too distracting, and it adds a bit of realism to the scene. So let's click on that. Let's let Photoshop import that. Uh, and I'm going to go in here and resize it um, with the trans free transform tool. Um, and if you hold, you know, if you just by default, it'll constrain the proportions. If you push shift, it'll do it like I'm doing it here so it'll fit my frame. So I'm going to match the horizon line about where the horizon would be off into the distance. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a um, graduate, uh, not a graduated, I'm going to create a, <laughs> can't even talk, uh, a layer mask, a, a gradient layer mask, and I'm just going to drag from the top to the bottom. You can see the trees silhouetted the tree line in the distance. It looks great. There are some bits of stars and sky in the trees and on the road that I don't want. So I just uh, push X on my um, keyboard and that's going to uh, change my foreground color. Um, as you can see here, it's uh, black and I'm going to just erase uh, off of the road and the trees, uh, places where I don't want that uh, gradient mask to fall. Um, and stars wouldn't be on the trees and they wouldn't be on the road. See, I can see exactly by pushing, what is it, Alt, uh, and clicking on the layer mask, I can see that I've selected the tree. There's no stars falling on that tree. Um, and it's just a good trick to see where your layer mask is, is uh, what part of the image it's affecting. But look at that. There's a shooting star in there. It's a free image, nice image. It totally matches the scene. Um, I'm super happy with it. You can also tweak those images a little bit if you want to. Uh, raise the you know, exposure, whatever you want to do. Change the color, do a solid color adjustment, whatever. But um, now we're going to go ahead and now that I've gotten the um, sky in there, we're going to go ahead and look at these. Uh, I think right here, I don't know if I do the, the cleanup first of the trunk. But first, I'm checking to see if I'm still recording because this screen software sometimes crashes and I'm going through all this and then I realize it's not recording. So I have to do it again. But uh, so you can see, you know, zoomed in here at, you know, over 100 percent, you can see all these little, you know, manufacturing defects in the vehicle. And that's no big deal. Just, you know, you can use your spot healing brush. You can use your clone stamp tool. And I just vary the opacity. Um, uh, just by hitting shift and whatever number on the keyboard I want my brush to end up at for opacity, like shift two or shift three is going to give me a 30%, you know, brush. And so I can clean these up, uh, just, just these big obvious ones where the depth of field is sharper. I'm not so worried about them as the depth of field falls off on the car, but you know, right here, I, I don't really want to see that. It kind of, we know it's a toy. We know it's, you know, toy photography, but we, we don't want to be, bombarded with uh, all these imperfections that we can see to help us reinforce the fact that it's a toy and they become distracting and ugly. So we just take them away with Photoshop. How incredible. <laughs> and these are just, I'm no Photoshop expert. These are just basic um, fundamental Photoshop tools that you should know if you're doing this clone stamp, you know, gradient filters, layer masks. These are some pretty basic principle, uh, some b basic, you know, foundational tools in Photoshop. Don't get scared in Photoshop that, oh, it's so big, I'm never going to learn it all. Well, you don't need to know it all. You just need to know what you're going to use. That's all. Um, you know, if you know all of Photoshop, man, you're super. <laughs> I just know what I use. And if you need help with, with how to use some tools or something like that, there's a ton of great channels out there for Photoshop. You know, uh, Picks Imperfect, Flurn, um, Tutvid. There's so many Photoshop videos out there that are just really packed full of content that teach Photoshop, uh, you know, in a, in a really thorough way. That's not what I'm doing here. I'm just showing you what I'm doing to make this image uh, become a final image. But now we've got a little basic, you know, cleaning up of the, you know, back of the car done. Um and I'm just double checking to make sure the screen recorder is still going because it wouldn't be the first time that I used screen recorder and it crashed and I didn't realize it and I had to do everything all over again. <laughs> anyway, so let's um, 
you can see my layers dialog, my layers panel up here. I've got a blank layer. I've got um, my uh, um, other layer, uh, you know, that I've clone stamped. Now I'm taking the polygonal, polygonal, if you can say that, lasso, and I am just making a rough outline that extends beyond the edges of the brake tail light. Um, with a feather radius, you can see here, I think you can see the feather radius, it's like 20%, but you can change that later after you do it, it doesn't matter. But you definitely want to have a feather on there. Uh, and we'll go ahead and add to selection by clicking the little boxes up there that look like two little boxes joined together, and we'll use the polygonal lasso and do the same thing on the other side. So what I've got is uh, two brake lights selected. I'm going to find a shade of red that I think is going to look cool uh, and work for this image. Then I'll click select. Then I will uh, alt backspace, whatever it is, or control backspace. Uh, and um, I'll fill this area, okay, which is what I just did. Now what I want to do is I want to blur that because that looks, those, that's not how tail lights look. <laughs> so we've got a nice blur going. I like the edges. Uh, it's blurred enough I can see the middle of it. Now what we're going to do after I slide the slider to the blur that I like, I'm going to click OK and commit to it. Um, and this is where, you know, you get to have a little bit more fun with it. You go to your layer blending modes. And like I say, you're going to choose either something like Color Dodge, uh, Vivid Light, probably Screen uh, Overlay, or, you know, Soft Light. One of those blending modes is what's going to give you the effect that you like. And you just cycle through them. I like that one. Man, that is pretty. <laughs> I'm like, yes, glow, baby. So, um, you know, and that's how I made the tail lights. Okay. Uh, and I mean, you guys might have a better way to do it or another way to do it. As long as you get the results you want, that's what it's about, you know. Um, but I like the way this image is shaping up. So with the tail lights done, let's go ahead and look at uh, how we're going to do the headlights. So Gavin Hoey has some brushes that are really cool. Uh, I downloaded a few years ago. I don't know if they're still available, but you can make your own presets uh, brushes. But I'm just using his because they're they're called light rays. And though I used them for portraits at one time, you can use them for all different kinds of things. And here I'm going to use them to create some, uh, you know, shapes for the headlights of this car. Uh, he has a really cool page too, Gavin Hoey. He's just a super cool creative guy, man, For if you're into portraits. Um, so uh, on a layer that uh, looks like I have a layer mask open up here, um, I just, with my headlight color selected of that yellow, I'm going to brush on uh, the yellow color there to make a headlight then I'm going to select I'm going to create one and then I'm going to go to the other side and I'm going to do transform free transform and I'm going to flip it horizontally um, and what that's going to do is going to give me two identical beams um, both you know on opposite sides of each other and I'm just trying to play with the shape here and see what looks uh, basically right uh, before I fine tune stuff, I I click on I double click on the layer mask and that opens up the dialog box you see right here where I can adjust the feather of it, which is the softness of it, and uh, you know until I get a look kind of that I want, and I do the same thing for the uh, beam on the left side. I double click on the layer mask and then it opens up the feather dialog box and you just slide the slider over and it feathers your uh, selection there in the mask. So um. You know, those, then I blend those two together, and, and I'm getting about what I like uh, as far as shape and color go. Now um, I'm going to start playing with the uh, transform uh, using Shift and Alt uh, to transform the uh, perspective of the two layers that I merged together to create the, the, the headlights. Um, and I'm going to put them kind of in the position I think that they would they would be in uh, and play with the size and perspective here a little bit until I decide what's going to look, you know, um, relatively good. I made a duplicate of the layer uh, and you can see that up there. I, I made a duplicate of it and I, and I made one bigger. I just want to fill this out a little bit more because it looks a little thin and um, I didn't want to have to repaint it and, and do that first layer again. So I just made a duplicate of it. Uh, and then I made an inverted layer mask 
Uh, then I'm going to select a brush here, just a regular round soft brush, and I'm going to brush back some of that duplicate layer that I did into the main beam, and it's just going to give me a little bit of a... Um, uh, it's just going to add a little bit more uh, of the headlights from that mask, from that inverted mask back into the um, back into the frame. And so we're going to go over and find a blur that we like, Gaussian blur here, and I'm just going to adjust the, the uh, radius of the blur. Now we're looking pretty good. We're getting kind of where we want to be. I'm just going to select a layer blend mode that's going to give me something that looks good. Also, like in the tail lights, we're going to go down to the to the lighter blend modes, which are, vi you know, some vivid lights, some screen overlay, soft light, stuff like, you know, right in that section. Um, and and I'm going to settle, you know, on on one. And I'm not I, I don't remember if I settle on screen here, uh, but I'm going back and forth between screen and color dodge, uh, you know, and some of these you can see just aren't going to work, <laughs> but you find the one that, that does, and then you can adjust the opacity of it. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, I'm saving because I don't want Photoshop to crash at all, <laughs> and then my work is wasted. So I do a save tip file before I re-import uh, another one back into Lightroom. But um, So we're going to zoom in here, and the reason I do that is because I want to see how much overlap is on the hood. Because I'm going to have to create, an, uh, I'm lowering my opacity here um, so that you can see a little bit more through the headlights. See the bushes up there through the headlights a little bit? And there's always a program error in Photoshop. <laughs> it's, sometimes it uh, makes you mad. But So we're adjusting our opacity. You can adjust the opacity or the fill. And you know, I'm getting about where I want to be, man. We're coming out pretty decent with these headlights. Um, you know, once again, I'm going to double click on that mask and it's going to open up that feather dialog box uh, and here using my brush tool I'm just brushing away some of the headlight from the roof of the car <laughs> the headlights wouldn't be on the roof of the car so that's what I'm doing that's why I zoomed in I just get in really close and tight so I can make sure that the headlights are you know in a believable position you know for being some you know yellow paint strokes on a Photoshop canvas. <laughs> you want it to be halfway believable. So I'm just fine tuning the overall shape uh, of the, the headlight itself and brushing away some of the unwanted area with a lower opacity brush, like maybe a 10 or 20% um, using the mask. And then I, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna adjust my fill. Uh, actually, I think I'm adjusting the opacity on that one and not the fill. But you can see the effect that it has. I mean, you know, this is there's so many ways to do this stuff, and this is just one. I'm sure some of you guys may know a better way. Uh, I'm not a expert in Photoshop, but, you know, I do turn out some pretty decent images, I'd like to think, sometimes. Uh, but look at this, man. You know, what a fun image. You've got shooting stars, you've got headlights, you've got some really cool brake lights, you've got a styrofoam road. Man, I mean, you know, if you're looking for a way to spend a rainy day, you know, in your garage, this this is it, you know. Uh, we're going to save this again for the copy uh, with headlights, so that I know, <laughs> and as a JPG. Um, but, guys, this stuff is... Is really fun, you know, and I'm glad uh, you guys stay tuned in and you stay, you know, uh, engaged with my channel. I appreciate it. It helps motivate me to continue to do more stuff. Uh, thanks to the people who requested some more toy, toy tutorial videos. Um, I appreciate it. You know, I hope you guys like this video. Uh, this is, you know, the end of this video is, like I say, it's just me going through Photoshop and showing you what I did. Um, but... Any questions, any comments, like and subscribe. I appreciate it, you guys. Uh, you know, we ended up with a really cool image here. And um, it didn't take long to do. I'm going to do some basic sharpening with high pass uh, on the bumper. Um, just some, you know, little fine-tuned stuff uh, to bring out some sharpness. I'm going to hit the, the bumper with some high pass uh, layer mask. And then also some of the road with a high pass layer mask. I'm just going to brush it back in where I want it. Um, and, you know, and then I'll import this back into Photoshop I'm um, into uh, Lightroom but I'll put those two images up here side by side next to each other 
uh, so you can take a look at it. Like and subscribe, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, all the images, uh, the tools that I use to create these images will be linked in uh, the description down below. If you guys want to buy any lights or anything, please use those links. It helps my channel. I appreciate it. Uh, take care.